Hi, I'm Femi OK. I'm Malika Bilal and you're in the stream live on Al Jazeera and YouTube. Today, our second extended episode on Nigeria. Why aren't more women in Nigerian politics? The stream speaks to women about their political aspirations and their thoughts on the country's upcoming election. You can join us with your questions and your comments. What more can be done to improve political representation for Nigerian women? Let us know via our YouTube chat or on Twitter at AJStream. Nigeria is Africa's largest democracy, but has one of the lowest percentages of female political representation on the continent. Women make up only 6% of the country's National Assembly, and no Nigerian woman has ever been elected president, vice president or governor. So what should be done to increase women's participation in government? Well, joining us to discuss that in Abuja, Nigeria, Abiodun Esiet. She is a politician and gender activist. In Oweri, Nigeria, Christina Uday. She is a Social Democratic Party candidate running for a seat in the House of Representatives. Also in Abuja, Indi Kato. She founded Politsheen, an organization whose objective is to promote female politicians in Africa. And in Lagos, Isabella Akincheye. She is the host of the Nigerian politics program Politico Politica. What? <laughs> Good to have you here, ladies. Uh, Christina, do you remember that moment where you thought, I am going to run, I am a politician? When did you know that? I've known that for many years ago. Um, I wanted to make, I knew I wanted to change, make a difference in the world. I knew that um, I wanted to effect change, but I just didn't know how and when, or if it was going to be on a governmental level or uh, on a non-governmental level. But um, what I didn't know, or what I didn't really think about, was what I, would, what I have experienced as a female politician. Uh -huh. Do you want to give us one story that's very vivid that explains that experience? <laughs> um, my story has many chapters, but um, I guess I'll just tell one. Um, when I came out to run for office, I, first of all, I worked in National Assembly for two years. And I worked very closely with the legislators. And while I was there, I developed a strong interest in becoming a legislator because most of the legislators that work there are either incompetent or not really sure of what they're, they're, they're really not sure what they're doing. Some of them are not there for the right reasons. Um, now, when I decided to run, I joined the, um, the political party in office, APC. And when I joined, um, the governor of the state had a mock primaries and he told me to step down. He what, told me what did he that say? he would give me, uh, what did he say? Down? What did he say? How did he tell you to step down? Um, well, there was a mock primaries. There were three mock primaries. Yeah. The first two went well. He was very happy with my background and the way I introduced myself and um, what I said I wanted to do for the people and why I was running for office. But the third one didn't go down well with me. He uh, called all the candidates in the state and when it got to my turn, he called me up. I stood up. He called me by, by my name and I stood up and he said to me, I scored 87%. And he looked at another guy and said, you scored 90%. And I was standing there wondering how he scored us, what scale did he put us on to give us those scores. And um, he said to me, are you going to accept the decision I'm about to make? Christina, let's cut and to the chase the here I because you, you said your, your story has many chapters. Why do you think he scored that way? Be yeah. candid. Go for it. Because... I think, I think yes, to be honest, yes. I think money. I feel oh, like, yes, okay. I, feel, I feel like the governor felt that the other guy had more money than myself. All right. Good story. Bad story. Abidion, <laughs> for you, yeah. getting into politics, when you told your friends, your family, that this is what you were going to do, what was their reaction? I felt I was crazy to go into politics as a young woman who has young kids. The thought I wasn't, that I wasn't serious with what I was doing. The thought I was crazy, so like, why do you want to go into policies? It's a dirty game. You don't need women who has a kind heart like you in politics. Politics has a lot of bad people. 
But I asked them one question. If we don't join politics as good people, then how can we change the game of the politics? How can we bring to our people the dividend of democracy? So that was a major reason. And when they, when they saw that I asked that question, they said they were going to support me since mm. I have a good heart and I have the mind of the people at heart. Mm. So I wanted to share one of the perspectives from our community, and it, and it kind of echoes what you were saying there about what people first told you. When we asked our community, why do you think that there aren't more women in Nigerian politics? Lawani is one of the people that responded, and he said, okay. women are meant to bear children, not to venture themselves in politics. So that said, we got lots of people who disagree with him, and I wanted to play a video comment from one of those people. Uh, she sent us this. She's the executive director of Step Up Nigeria. She's also an author in Abuja, Onyiye, and she explains some of these thinkings that lead to women not wanting to go into politics. Have a listen. The reason why women are underrepresented in Nigerian politics lies in our culture. For example, I have a friend who is running for the House of Representatives, and she was asked if she had taken permission from her husband before running for office. This is the situation we find here in Nigeria. And I think to improve this, we need to begin to get the, make it mandatory for political parties to ensure equal representation of women in key political positions, as well as educating young girls on the importance of taking up leadership positions and the role they can play in this area. So, Indy, you are working to tell the stories of women in politics, and of course, you also ran in your primary. Talk to us about that, the things that you face, and, and, and link it to that first tweet that I read there, because there's a lot of people that feel the same way as he did. Well, I mean, the conversation when you're running for office, uh, my family, where I come from, let's say we're a tad liberal, so my family did support, my mom supported, uh, my brother did not. And then back home, if you're not married, I'm not married, it's a problem. Oh, you're not married yet, you're still young, why are you doing this? And then if you're married as a Nigerian woman and your husband does not come from where you come from and are trying to run for office and like, oh, your husband is not from here, it means you owe your loyalty to your husband's people. And then if you're married to, you know, your husband is not from there, you're running your husband, husband's place. It's another issue too, oh, you don't come from here, so... We just do not have a place. There's so much. There's the talk of you are loose, you're a prostitute. There's the whole mansplaining. Every time you're trying to get something done, someone who is not really as intelligent as you are trying to tell you this is how to go about it, you're meeting with people Indeed, and they're just not I would taking love you seriously. To hear, I know our audience would love to hear a little bit of the mansplaining that you've experienced. Can you remember yes. a, a line? So, uh, mansplaining, it, it stays with you, <laughs> Indy, share. You know, you, you, you come, I, I came from the national, um, I, I work at the, at the head office of our party, of course. I've represented my party in the media. I've done a lot of work like that. And you go to the village and they go, oh, a young man sees you and immediately he goes, you know this politics thing. Come, let me tell you what it is about. And you're like, no, I've, I've been here for a while. I've done this, I've done that. Yes, but you know you are a woman. Let me teach you. And it's very condescending. There's a nature to it. And when you try to tell them, look, I know what I'm doing. You are, you're taught to be rude. Of course, there are terms for women who are strong. You know, there's the B word that I can't mention here. You'll be called rude. You're trying to be a man. You're competing with men. Yeah. You hear a lot of people also tell you you belong in the kitchen. What are you yeah. doing here? It's because you're not married. Mm -hmm. That's why you have the time for all of this. When you marry, your husband will tame you. And then there's the F word where they think feminist is a bad thing. And they say, oh, you're one of those feminists. Bah. And yes, I am one of those feminists. Exactly why mm -hmm. I'm here. Isabella, yeah, I, I think yeah, what Indy is trust. saying is very true because um, cultural conditioning and the media, that's the space I play in, is also complicit mm -hmm. in portraying women in politics. So the, even things like movies, things like soap operas, there was a particular one I watched and a woman was running for office and the men around her in her party told her she needed to get married just so she could have a better chance at running. So I think the media doesn't always portray women who are in politics give them enough space give them enough mileage but that being said some of these women also have the responsibility to push themselves forward so I host a political program called political politica and I made it 
a conscious decision to yeah. feature as many women as possible. But I have had instances where I'll reach out to a woman and she'll tell me that her husband said she has to be back at home at a certain time and he doesn't want her on the roads. Another woman has told me she was doing a photo shoot and I said, this is only going to take... 30 minutes of your time. I'm coming mm -hmm. with my crew to record you, to give you an opportunity to speak about what you're offering people. But yet, you're finding excuses. Someone will tell you about the nanny. Someone will tell you about childcare. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. the media can do a whole lot more by giving ample opportunities for these kind of conversations to happen. It shouldn't only be a special edition for women in politics. Women in politics should become the norm. And I think women themselves mm -hmm. need mm -hmm. to put themselves forward. They can't always blame anybody. And the other thing is that some of the other women don't yeah. believe in supporting women. They put a glass ceiling and that ceiling mm -hmm. ends at Senate. I've had people tell me that, look, if you're going to run for office, the best you'll get to is deputy governor or I'll vote for you to go into Senate. But presidency, forget about it. Governorship, forget about it. A woman can only do well at Senate. A woman can do well at Assembly. Or be a woman also, leader in a party. Isabella, I, it's interesting you yeah, said that I because think... I, I, I just saw a tweet that said the same thing. This is Al Hassan. This is a man saying it. Al Hassan says, women in Nigeria are the enemy of themselves. They don't vote a woman candidate. We saw it in the past when a woman presidential That's aspirant great. got only one vote during party primaries, while many women were among the delegates. So that's one person echoing that I, sentiment that there's not a I lot don't. of support. But I, I, yeah, I just, I, I just I wanted think, to I give think, one more perspective. One second there. I wanted to give one more perspective yeah. because I wanted to share this. This is from Amel, who writes, ingrained prejudice against women is deep-rooted in Nigeria. No matter how subtle you find, and this even happens in some first-world countries that are guilty of this, she belongs either in bed or in the kitchen and not in an office. And it will take a long time to get over this. So I bring this one up, guests and audience, because we know mm -hmm. that this same type of thinking has been seen even in the highest levels of Nigerian politics. Femi, I'll, I'll pass this one All over right. to you. So, uh, Indy, yeah, I, Indy I, and Abidu, I, I know you want to get in here, but let me just play this because then you can bounce off the back of this. This is your president, President Buhari, back in 2016, talking about where women should be, where their place should be. Have a listen. I don't know which party my wife belongs to, but uh, she belongs to my kitchen and my living room and the other room. Indy, go ahead. Huh. I, I would say that I do not think that President Buhari is the person I'll go to, to to talk about women's participation in politics or to sound off on him. But one thing is very clear. His wife did show after that that she does not belong to any of those rooms and she's not campaigning yeah. for him. So that's an issue for another day. Now, going forward, um, I, I, that statement, women hate each other or do not support other women, it, yeah. it does anger me. There's social conditioning, of course. A lot of women in Nigeria are under the control of patriarchy and do not believe that they belong in certain spaces. It's not out of hate for the next woman. I mean, male politicians, when... Ogun State this week, and they, they were stoning each other, and that does not come out as men hate other men. Men, male politicians arrest themselves all the time. It doesn't come out as men hate other men. But these narratives are very easy to throw out for disadvantaged groups, primarily being women. It's very easy to throw out women. One woman does not agree with the other. Oh, women hate other women. These women are not conditioned. Even I was not socialized, nor conditioned towards leadership, nor to see women, you know, as leaders. If my mom did not end up breaking that mold and becoming a professor herself, yeah. I don't think I would have seen yeah. it. Most of her sisters yeah. were married off before they even touched 10 years old. That is the norm yeah. where I come from. You know, so women do not yeah. hate other women, yeah. but there is that socialization. There is that socialization mm -hmm. to see that, I mean, your husband is telling you this. Young men mm -hmm. on Twitter, on that app, are writing this kind of thing. The people that are writing those things on Twitter are not in their 50s or 60s. They belong to my generation. So girls mm -hmm. like me, too, are seeing this. I remember in secondary school, many girls would come in JS1 with many wild ideas, you know, wanting to take over the world. But by the time they get to JS2, others with that social conditioning will meet them and then you start hearing mm -hmm. them talking about their husband's houses. So that's the situation mm -hmm. now. But we I, women I, I are there. Let me point out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, let me 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 let me
Thank you very much, Femi. I think, you know, what Indy said is in line with what I have in mind. I think we should stop the narrative of saying women don't support women. And I think it's one of the tactics of the men. And I think majorly the issue we have is the way we socialize our children. You know, the World Economic Forum predicted, you know, in 2017 that it would take 100 years for us to close the gender gap. Because, you know, some of these issues are still in place, the structural and the institutional issues that still limit women. I, I think I just um, add what Indy said I, about I, cultural conditioning. Okay, go ahead. Christina? Can I just add something to what um, Indy said? Please do. Um, in terms of, yes, in terms of, yeah, I kind of agree with her in terms of we should stop this thing about women hating on women. But if we want to look at it critically, how come we don't have, we have, we have the boys club where the boys support the boys who are running for office. How come we don't have that with women? We don't you have can that start for it. women. Christina, you can start well, I, I, it. That's I think, how this I thing works. Christina, there are also women in politics how many forum. Women are so there are women, women in politics forum. Oh. Uh, you know, Ebera Ifendu and a lot of other women are helping. That. Hear. There are a lot of women support groups. Women yeah, do not have the finances, but Indy, there are women support groups. When women groups. see yeah. each other, they are most likely going to talk about their children, their husband, before yeah. they start talking business, before they start no, talking No, in, in politics. Abiodun can and tell you that. When I, it, I, I'm it, just finding I out that Abiodun is married. Indy, Indy, Isabella, just, just let each other have the space yeah. because no one can hear you if I you're talking I'm over each, each other. Abiodun, yeah. go ahead. Thank you very much. I think we need to change the narrative of the way we socialize our children. And I said I was speaking according to the World Economic Forum. In 2018, their report shows that the widest gap is the political leadership gap because we have enough women that still not occupy leadership position. You know, I address the issue of women in politics in, in, in a way that, you know, there are so many things affecting it. Religious is part of it. The way we socialize our children is also one of the foundations that, we, that is also limiting us. Right. And, you know, the economic capacity of mm -hmm. women has also been a major limitation to our progress. So we need to change the narrative and also we define what is called winning for women. Get more women involved into the party structure. Have more women occupy key positions in political leadership, in political parties. Then we cannot talk about changing or bridging the gap in political leadership and also changing the mindset of our religious leaders and our cultural leaders about the potentials of women. A lot of people quote the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran about what the Bible or the Quran has said about the potentials of women. They said women cannot be a leader, but women can represent. And you know, that's why some women who are in the North American say, okay, we want to go into house of representation and represent our people. If you can't give us governorship position or chairmanship position, which automatically means leadership. So I think, you know, we have a lot of issues or sectors that need to be involved when we want to address okay. the issue of women empowerment. Okay, yes, so I'm going to I'm gonna move us on a little bit. Also... Uh, Abby Aldrin, thank you, thank you. I, I, I hear exactly where you're going. I want to show you this picture. If you've been following our Nigeria Decides 2019 uh, special programs and special coverage and all of our Twitter um, tweets going out there, you'll see this face here. This was a former candidate for this current election. So her name is Obi Ezekuzile, and she dropped out. She dropped out in January. She's very prominent. She's a former minister, very well known. She talks about the barriers to competing in politics in Nigeria. Have a listen. During the course of my candidacy, there were women that I ran on other party tickets and uh, uh, other party platforms. And part of what happened was either it was impossible for them to stay through the primaries at all, or when they in fact succeeded, they were asked to step down for a male counterpart. Uh, that's a definite barrier. And the political party is very important for you to actualize any kind of uh, electoral bid. So uh, the, the running of Dr. Isaac Sweely uh, was, was one thing that our community was all over, very excited about it. But of course, when she left that race, uh, there was a lot of talk. Have a look at this here. This is um, being circulated online, this tweet. One person says what happened is a major setback on the possibility of a female president in Nigeria. She has set a bad record for our female politicians and it's very unfortunate. And this is coming after accusations of wrongdoing during the 
campaigning, Udu here writes, please, let's not downplay the efforts of more courageous and genuine female presidential candidates, and he names one right here, who are willing to fight until the end. Madam Obi Izekeswili is not the SI unit of Nigerian women in politics. Isabella, do you want to walk us through that? What are the views yes. based on people that you've talked to uh, of, of this moment in Nigerian politics? So I have interviewed Dr. Ezekwisili before she quit the presidential race and also the lady mentioned in the tweet, Eunice Atuejide. And I feel that sometimes women go into this race without counting the cost and not realizing that as a woman, people will first judge you on your gender. So anything you do or don't do, they will say, oh, it's because she's a woman. And I'll give you an example. When we had the vice presidential debate, that was an opportunity for the vice presidential candidates, the female candidates present, to really make a case, not just for themselves, but for the gender. Because we are not starting at the starting block. We're starting 100 meters from the starting block. But sometimes they don't leverage those opportunities. And the cultural conditioning, like Indy mentioned, is still an issue. It's still an issue because there are not enough role models. There are not enough people coming out to say, this is my story. And I just wanted to talk touch on something, which is you will see men sponsoring other men. You will see men coming out to endorse men. But how many women are doing the same? We talk about political yeah. godfathers, men who are mm. sponsoring other men. But we don't talk about political godmothers. I can mention five political godmothers, because we don't have but I can't talk us. about political godmother. So yes, it's one thing to say women support women, but are they supporting them in the open? Are they coming out and the staking finances. their names? No, mm -hmm. no, it's not enough to can say I, we don't have I the finances. In? We can all put yeah. money together if it's such it's such an important thing. All of us, we, we do a susu where we put little money, little money, little money. If everybody did that, you have four years to the next election cycle and you started putting money towards a, a female candidate that you believe in. That excuse about I money think... will go away. We have rich women who have deep pockets that can support during, women in politics. Well, are they ready during, to during my during my campaign, mm -hmm. during Indeed, my campaign, yes, during my campaign for State House of Assembly, a lot of bright young women brought in their money. But we have to understand, do I have women I look up to in politics? Yes. But let's take the journey of a typical woman in politics, you know. Many women who will mentor you, who will be there for you and have all the good intentions for you are really not on the same financial or economic standing. Remember, we're economically dis disadvantaged in this society in the first place. Now, these women started in politics in 99. Many of the men they started with have gone on to be governors, senators, kingmakers. These women do not have the same opportunities. And so with these opportunities come the ability to give you this bulk of money. So most of these young men are going to senators. They are going to governors, former governors, yeah. and that whole network. Yeah. Women do not. These women can support you and mean so well for you, put your names in many things for you to go to, but they do not have that fund to give you. And we have to yeah. look at this angle and look at the reality of what is on ground. The women do mm -hmm. not. Women in business, I would not mention Nigerian women's names, but you've heard them. Every time they have to apologize for even who they are. So every time a, a billionaire or a bank executive is called to talk about anything mm. in the media, she has to tell you, instead of telling young women how they've mm. made their money right. or how they are going to help, so, they so have Indy to So Indy and Isabella and I Christina said, yes. Abidion, yeah. there's so much more to talk about, yeah. which is really good because we have another okay. show that is starting online the moment that we finish on TV. Malika? Okay. I, I'll, I'll end this part of the conversation with this tweet from Deborah, who says that one thing is common amongst all of our guests today is that they have stepped out of the norm. There's still so much work to be done to reach into the mindset of other women, but I'm positive that it's achievable. Okay, so this conversation yeah, isn't over. We are going to go from TV onto online to do this with me, computer, laptop, phone. This is the URL that you need, aljazeera.com forward slash Nigeria stream. And as long as I spelt it correctly, we will magically be taken to our YouTube show, which is starting pretty much right now, adazira.com forward slash Nigeria stream. And Malika and I will see you there online in ooh, less than 60 seconds. See you soon.
I want somebody that would lead a government that would enshrine transparency in public procurement and recruitment process. As a young person, I'm searching for opportunity and this transparency is the only hope that I have. We need to look at policies that will encourage the growth of micro and small businesses and prevent over taxation of these people. That's what I'm voting for. I think that uh, Nigeria has to move forward uh, to including uh, progressive Nigerians and young Nigerians in governance. A youth that occupies almost half the population of this nation, we can change things. We can do more. I'm begging on us all. Let's vote at this administration that does not care about our future. Let's vote for peace. Youth represent 70% of the population in Nigeria. Ever since I was growing up, we all kept hearing youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Well, when is that tomorrow going to come? Welcome back. This is the second part of the stream's extended look into Nigerian politics ahead of the country's elections on Saturday. We're talking about the political representation of women, and with us is a panel of Nigerian women in politics. Abiodun Isiet, Christina Ude, Indi Kato, and journalist Isabella Akinsheye. Let's get right back to the conversation with the topic of quotas. We asked our community what do they think about gender quotas and if they're the answer to improving political representation in Nigeria. Here is one answer. Kunle writes in, to solve gender quotas, we need to ask ourselves the right question. That is, should gender quotas be based on merit or sympathy? So fighting words right there. But before you all answer, I want to show you the thoughts of a journalist, former stream guest. This is Sandra Izekwasili. She's a journalist at Nigeria Info FM. And here's what she told the stream. Quotas are an answer, but they're not the answer. The gender equality bill did not pass because the Nigerian men in parliament see it as a threat to them. It's like Turkey's voting for Christmas. We have 109 senators, 102 are men. If they did a quota system to get women in parliament, some men will have to lose seats. Rwanda's quota system has a lot of women in parliament and the most in the world, the highest numbers in the world. When we say this, we are reminded that this happened in the aftermath of their genocide and women having to take on more, more leadership roles because they lost a lot of their men. But that can't be the only reason. You can't tell me that the only way to get women into government is to kill off all the men. Killing off all the men. That can't be no, the only way. Indeed. Not. Take that on for us. Quota, what is your take <laughs> on that? Okay, so I, I did... I, 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 at first, I did not support quota because of that silly argument that says, oh, is it based on merit? Men have a quota of near 100%, and it's clearly not based on merit. So this question <laughs> should not be popping up. when It's very upsetting. Is it based on merit or not? Yeah. I would always say, yes, I support quota, but I do not support tokenism, you know. But here's the thing. The people that dominate this space are not really running this space well, and they're still having close to 100%. 100% in some yeah. countries. So why is it when you ask for 30% for women, all of a sudden we want to know competence? There are members in the House of Reps who cannot even write their own name, who cannot speak yeah. English. And let, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be colonialist here, but it's the language in which we are col uh, scholarly in. But when it comes to women, we tend to ask these questions no and if we're talking about the rwandan genocide i, I uh, sandra as a question is a, as an excellent person but let me point this out nigeria has had enough kin especially where i come from i've been here previously for the issue on southern Kaduna with my governor we're arguing on, on, on aj stream and we have killings there so if this is a reason a lot of women where i come from come from have had to become you know impromptu head of homes because of this situation why are we not mm -hmm. allowed to head the society mm -hmm. too christina your yeah. thoughts on quota <laughs> Um, well, I, I would like to see the quota bill, mm -hmm. um, and of course I would want to see more women in office based on merit, not sympathy. Um, and I, I just love what Indicator said, she just said exactly but what how, I was but how do you, But how um, do you do that? So you, otherwise, the, the no Nigerian female president, governor, uh, vice president. <laughs> so you're telling me that in a country of 180 million people, at least half of those are female, almost half of those are female, that in that entire time that there's been a democratic process, there's been no woman based on merit who could have been filled any of those roles. Because if you want it on merit, what do you do? What's the strategy? Yeah, you know, we just, we just have to keep society. pushing. Um, yeah. Can I go ahead? Yeah, please, finish. Finish up, Christina. Okay. Um, we just have to keep pushing. Um, it's, it, it, we, we, we have a long way to go, yes. 
Um, and the man, if they keep telling us to step down, and if we keep standing to our ground and keep pushing to run for office, then someday we will, we will get there. Abby Olden, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think quota system is one oh, way for us to go, you know, TV. you know, to get one woman into leadership position. It helps, you know, to push ahead more women in leadership position, not just women, but women who have something to offer, who have credibility. And also, you know, a lot of our laws and policies that we have signed that ratify, like CEDAW Convention, make provision for like 50% of people in legislature at the local governance level should be women. So it's one thing that puts women ahead, you know, desperate understanding the fact that we have oh, so many underlying factors that limit women. So the quota system gives us one hedge ahead of this structural issue that affects women's um, participation in politics. So it's something that I really promote. It's something that can give women ahead of every structural issue that's affecting them. Mm. I wanted to Along give you... with understanding I, internal party yeah. democracy, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I hear what you're saying there, um, Abby Oden, yeah. and I wanted to share two perspectives from our community. So one is uh, from someone who's watching live on YouTube, and he says, could it perhaps be because less Nigerian women or fewer Nigerian <laughs> women are interested no. in Nigerian <laughs> politics <laughs> than Nigerian no. men? So a resounding no. Don't even need to yeah, really no. get your deep thoughts on that. But I wanted to <laughs> give you the opposite of that yeah. view. It's from a video comment we got from uh, Nana. She's a public affairs consultant in Abuja, and here's her take. Previously, I have always been against affirmative action, saying, oh, it doesn't make women put the best foot uh, forward and all that, and we just get people who are available. But to be honest, in order for women to move forward in Nigeria, we have to negotiate with patriarchy. We have to negotiate with the gatekeepers of democracy, men. That's the only way we can get a slot and start to make changes. But the thing is, in order to do that, we still have to put the best women forward. So putting you know, the, the, I think, go ahead, go ahead, look at, look take at, it over. Yeah, at I, I think that with, at, um, with the quota system, I think the quota system works. And let's look at even education. So I studied at the University of Cambridge and many years ago, women could not attend that institution. Now, at the University of Cambridge, we have two female colleges. Those colleges ensure that women can come to Cambridge. And for me, that's a form of quota system. Yes, Cambridge is mm. now a co-educational institution. So I think it's the same thing that can happen in politics. We yeah. have to start with quota systems. And even yeah. if it's not the best of the best, because you cannot force the women who are too busy running businesses, exactly. who are too busy writing on social media <laughs> and not wanting to roll their sleeves up, or the women who get into the race and it gets too hot, or for whatever reason, they have to quit. So if the best women come forward, great. But if the best women don't come forward and there's a quota system, then we still have to push um, women forward. And we'll just like Indy said, get. the men, yeah. is it everybody, exactly. is it everybody you know, that is, is um, based on merit? No, it's not everybody yeah. based on merit. I've interviewed quite <laughs> a number of men running for office. And Most of them are I marvel not and I say, merit. how come this mm -hmm. person is not. running? What qualifies you to run? But they have exactly. such confidence and they believe that because they're just men, they deserve it. And they, they even look down on the women that are more qualified than them. So please, but yes, quota it, Indy, and when Isabella is talking, yes. don't talk over her because you have good things to sorry. say. She has good things to say. Oh and I frustratingly can't sorry. hear her. No, no, it's fine. Now I'm say sorry, what. Okay. No apologies needed. Now say what no, you're going to say. Saying. I was saying that many men in the system, I mean, if you work in politics, you will meet a lot of charlatans. They do not deserve to be there. And look, with this politics thing, give it to me for whatever reason. You pity me. Okay, thank you. I want it. Whatever reason, we're not complaining, you know. Th thank you, thank you. You think, oh, we're really these measly people and you want to help with positions. Give it for whatever reasons. And the, again, let's go back to the people who are there. They're not, I mean... Look at the state of the nation and the people who have handled it for a majority of the time. Not really excellent. So, yeah, give women. If the, the best women are not there, give the available women. Let's start from there. But we need to start from somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to start now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. I'm really fascinated think, by, I, I, by, I think... by what you really unpacked for us together uh, is... is the culture is so overpowering that it tells you as a woman what you should, should not be doing. And mm -hmm. what are the strategies? Quotas may be one way. Can you imagine if there was a quota system for this current election? It would be a mm -hmm. very different outcome. The election would look incredibly yeah. different. 50% women, 50% men. That would be extraordinary. 
cultural change. Mm -hmm. uh, Isabella, I remember you saying um, that part of the challenge was that people expect women to be married. Why aren't you married? They not, they sometimes would say that to a man. In order to succeed in politics, you need to have a family, you need to be married. Is that a strategy that women should be looking at as well? Do they need to go, OK, mm -hmm. I'm really driven, <laughs> I want this girl, let me find a husband, that's going to look good on the poster? No. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's not a strategy that should be employed, except the man you're trying to marry maybe comes from a deep political family With and you, money. you can leverage that. Or so just like he money. said, he has the money to fund your campaign. So if he has the money to find, fund your campaign, mm. or maybe he comes from a very influential family, then that's one way. But that you should just decide to marry to decide to spend your, your life with somebody just because of no. a, an election that you might win or not win. No. No to that. And I mm -hmm. think over time, we can change the culture. Yes, we talk about cultural conditioning, but if more women put themselves forward, if more men come out to say, this is my wife who is going for presidency or going for <laughs> governorship, I support her, her brothers. And you know, the, the bad thing is that from a young age, men are told, a little boy of five years old will be told that he is the king and the head of a home and the mm -hmm. old woman of 30 years or 40 years old needs to respect this boy and you know the people who are doing that women it's the mothers that are reinforcing okay. this cultural conditioning mm -hmm. it's the grandmothers mm -hmm. that are doing it so even the mm -hmm. block stops at us women to change the yeah. culture if all of us say our nephews our brothers mm -hmm. our uncles mm -hmm. our fathers mm -hmm. and we take them with the facts and say no I can run. I deserve to be the president. I deserve to be anything I want to be. And let's not forget that in our own backyard in West Africa, we have a female president. We also have another mm -hmm. female president in Mauritius. So it's mm -hmm. not an African thing. Yes, you can have women as presidents, as right. governors, as deputy governors, yeah. as well as as um, vice presidents. All right, listen, let me throw out another idea here because mm -hmm. I'm hearing problems uh, and I want to see if we can get to some solutions. Uh, money. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if all the women in Nigeria put together their money, they could just get themselves and the next president just with money. Yeah. Abby Odom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do they understand the need for, for them to support a woman in politics? It's a bigger question. Everybody, mm. all the men who are candidates are, are candidates today because the other men support them. I had an issue with financial, with finances when I was running. All my male counterparts had people who were sponsoring them for the campaign. But for the fact that I was a woman, I didn't have any major sponsor for my campaign. So, you know, they feel as a woman, you are not something profitable for politics because politics is not meant for you. And especially when you're a young woman and also you are married, they think politics is not for you. So it's not something for people in business or for women in business to sponsor. But we need to change the narrative and allow all this partners and women to understand the need why they have to have enough women in politics. Let them take it as our mm. own rule. When women in Nigeria understand these facts, then we have one step mm. ahead to making sure that women will have that equal representation. But until then, when we don't have the, you know, the knowledge of an equal knowledge about women's participation in politics, then we don't have any, we can't go far. But women, and both men and women, need to understand the fact that women need to be in political leadership. One is to empower women, one to create a gender equal bill and policies that can affect and promote women development. You can see the issues mm -hmm. we're having with gender and equal rights opportunity bill. You have only eight women in Senate. How do you want us to pass that mm -hmm. kind of bill? It has been rejected up to now in our Senate. They've, they've called off the public hearing for our gender and equal rights opportunity bill twice because of this issue of gender and cultural issue. Because they felt it's a gender and equal opportunities bill, then it's for women that we don't need they that. They laugh at it. You yeah, know, they laugh at it. You know, Abby, you're doing one of the things you said is until then. So I want to pick up on that because I want to play this video comment from someone who was looking at the then, who's, who's forecasting a little bit. This is Abide out of Abuja. She's the president of the Women in Politics Forum. And here's what she told the stream. I am impressed with the participation of women so far. Consistently, we have continued to soar against all odds, even though the system makes it difficult for us. I think the next thing for us to do is to ensure that we have internal party democracy in all the political parties. And also, we need to follow up on legislation to achieve affirmative action. And again, we also need to 
and sustain sensitization of women on the need for them to participate in politics. Generally, Nigerian women have shown resilience, they have shown character, they have shown integrity. And we hope that by the end of um, this season, we will have more women participating come 2023. So, Christina, she takes us all the way to 2023. You are still in the running for the House of Representatives. What do you think it will yeah, take to include more women in that pool by 2023? I think we should have more women in the funnel ready to go. Um, we should start preparing women now, um, come 2023, so we can have that channel. And usually what happens is when we don't have that channel, when it's time, when the election time comes, we don't have enough women running. Also... We need to have a support system. Um, when I say support system, I don't, ju I don't just mean, I mean money. If you're going to tell a woman to run, you should also be able, we should also be able to provide the tools for the woman to run. Um, also, um, men, some men wake up in the morning and they say they're going to run for office. We don't have a lot of women saying that. So we need to find a way to start getting them, maybe encouraging them, um, mentoring them. Um, and letting them know that, yes, if, if a man can run for office, you can also run for office if that's something you want to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at... Yeah, yeah I think political education yeah, think is important. important. Yes. I think political education is important because if people don't know what's available, if people think that, oh, elections are only about presidency, but you have other things. You have House of Assembly. You have counselorship. Yeah. You oh, have opportunities Isabel, to I'm engage I'm so glad you at mentioned the that because, yeah. Abby Oduna, you're yeah. running for council. Let me show everybody yeah. this. Uh, this is from Premium Times. 2019, meet candidate who wants to be the first female councillor of Abuja Ward. You're starting grassroots level. Why? Yeah. I think that's the greatest place to effect a social change in democracy and good governance because the bulk of the people who are voting are in the grassroots level. And if I have to change the mindset of the people about how politics is being played, then I have to start at the grassroots level. But the major challenge is I'm too educated for the grassroots level. That is what my opponent tells me. Mm. They felt I'm, I'm too enlightened. I have a yeah. master's degree. So what am I doing in grassroots politics? There. And I and told them I have the heart of the them. people. I'm into community yeah. development. I want to promote leadership and bring about social change in the way people think about leadership and good governance. And I think the best place to effect any social change is at the grassroots level. These are the ones voting. We need to change their mindset that, you know, they need a good candidate who can deliver the dividend of democracy to them. And that's why I'm starting small at that level. So you're a kind-hearted politician. You are overqualified for councillor. What is your political trajectory in your head? Where are you going to end up? I believe I want to get into the party structure, get into the structure of this party and grow in it. You know, you know, we've seen a lot of prime minister of UK. She started as a councillor. So I'm projecting to start as this councillor to also aim high to be a senator and also to be a governor in my country, to be a governor and the first female governor in my state. I think that's the projection. But I want to grow and learn the politics. That's why I want to, I want to get into the party structure and see how things are being done. Also learn from the men who are the best boss in this game. Also learn the tactics and the strategies that they are using mm -hmm. and see how I can use that to grow. And why I am growing, also bring in more other women. In my own zone, I was the first woman to ever aspire to be a councillor in the Rosal Ward since 1995 when the ward was created. So I've broken a lot of gas ceiling, though I didn't make up to be a candidate of my party, but I've gotten opportunity to get into the party structure and be like a sec secretary of my campaign committee of my party. And I think that's one step. We need more women in key position. Right now in political parties, women are in position of only woman leader and woman mobilizer. And that position mm. alone cannot bring about the change we are looking for. We need women in key position, like a chairmanship of a political party, so that we can disrupt the internal party democracy in favor of women. Until then, we need to have enough women in the political party structure to effect better change and bring in more women. For instance, looking at what happened in our primary election, we have over six thousand women that enter into the race to aspire for one office or the other. But up to now, the statistics of women that we have in key positions who are now candidates is even lesser than what we have in 2015. So, you know, in 2019, they won't have more difference in the numbers of women in Senate or House of Rep because the internal party democracy did not favor them. 
Do you know, ladies, do you know what, just listening to you for the last sort of 40 minutes or so, do you know what's becoming very clear to me is that you are formidable political opponents. Maybe you just scared the men silly. Yeah. I, I think what she said um, is, is one of the solutions because I feel that if you can start yeah. and build a base, it doesn't matter which party you go to. If you can mm -hmm. engage with them at the grassroots, even if you started your own party and you don't have the money, the people that you've been able to touch will come behind you. They will put their money together. And a lot of us are educated. We have educated women coming out. We can go back mm -hmm. to our businesses. We can go back to people in our network. We can go back to the people who are doing school runs with, the people who are having Friday night TGIF with and say, I'm going for this thing. If you can support my business, then you can support my political ambition. Mm -hmm. It's my birthday. I don't want a present. I want your contribution. I want you to go from door to door. I want you in your mm -hmm. office to be my ambassador. So I think we can start now. And whatever momentum yeah. that we are building, even if it's at the grassroots, in the next four years, eight okay. years, 12 years, you will have a it's mass good. that even the political parties will have to push forward women. Because by mm -hmm. that time, it will become the in thing to have women. Mm -hmm. So here is one woman yeah. pushing in just that way that you're saying. This is Khadija Abdullahi. She's a vice presidential candidate for the Alliance for New Nigeria. She's in Abuja. And here's what she thinks. There's a growing awareness and understanding of the latent creativity and potential of a woman in leadership. A woman in leadership understands the intrinsic values that a, a, a family system needs and a community needs for a sane and safe community. So she says there is a growing awareness and understanding. Indy, do you think that that's true? Does that give you hope? Yeah. Yes, yeah, well, yes, it does. Uh, let, me, let me say something about you know, our participation. For me, normalizing women's participation is a thing. And I think that those of you on the other end you know, the media, Femi, Bilal, you people have a lot of work to do. You would notice that with, um, with respect to how you engage Nigerians, for example, when it's time to talk about the economy, how many women are here talking about it? And we are very sound in these things, too. Yeah, so I, you know, I, talk, I, I, yeah. I, India, I just challenge you back on the stream, at least 50%. <laughs> oh, that, oh. That's great. Right? But, you mm -hmm. know, Nigerian media... Niger of course, I was here before, like I said, to talk mm -hmm. about the crisis in mm -hmm. my region, so I would know that. But Nigerian media, not many. You're here to talk about the military, not many. Even as someone who represents my party in the media, and I knock it out the park every time, some media, some media stations will still say, oh, let's wait when it's time to discuss women in politics. We'll mm. call her again. Like, Indy, oh, wow. I, I love, you. I love no, how no, no, no. You, you've adopted the uh, male approach of not being humble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because not. Indy awesome. knocks it out of the park Tell every time awesome. and is not oh ashamed to say it. No, no but I think Google me. As, as women, I am awesome. I think as women, we can take the ball in yeah, our I, own court. So I decided to start my program. So prior to starting Political Politica, I had run entertainment programs, lifestyle programs. But I said, not enough people are coming out. We say we've passed the not too young to run bill. But let's face it, media enterprises, they want to make money. So they're always going to call people that, one, will not give them the excuse of husband and wife. Two, will draw in eyeballs. People that would well, make people watch the I show. Think, you so know, you have a female candidate that's going to come on, and but she will not create any media awareness. So if you do that over <laughs> and over, then you become unattractive. But I said, rather than complaining, why don't I create a platform and make it a duty to, no matter what, no matter the challenges, uh -huh. to include women on the program. But yet, women still give the kind of excuses I mentioned earlier. They are busy, they have other responsibilities, <laughs> and sometimes they don't take the opportunities. But I think that if we have people like Indy, who knock it out of the park? Because mm -hmm. I did watch her on the debate, and she did absolutely brilliant. And also, I, I, I have to say, Indy, I'm teasing. I absolutely <laughs> agree with you, but not many <laughs> women would feel comfortable about saying on a live mm. broadcast, "I knock it out of the park every time." I do. Oh, kudos well, to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we've almost got to wrap it up. Uh, but before we do that, Malika. I will end with uh, two comments on, on YouTube. Banning Production says we need to celebrate any form of leadership that women embody so that they are encouraged to do more. And then one here, this is a suggestion from someone on YouTube, Emanuela, who says she should run for president because she listens to the grassroots level. Abio Dune, they are talking about you. But I will extend that to all of our politicians here on the show. Thanks for joining us.
Thank you so much. Abby, you're doing uh, good luck with your campaign. Christina, good luck with Thank yours. You. Indy, knock Thank it out you. of the park. <laughs> See you next time. Isabella, thank, thank you. you so much. Really appreciated thank your you. time. You'll always see us online at AJ Stream. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching, YouTube audience. Take care.